Right now, city police investigate what led to a double homicide this morning in West Baltimore. Police responded just before 6 a.m. for a reported double shooting. Here, when the sun rises, the darkness remains. Morning light barely visible through cracks in wooden boards and shattered window panes. We're not woken by the light of the sun, but by the eardrum busting sounds of sirens and angry bullets one by one. Under our pillow is where we hide our dreams, all blessed and alone, so we can still believe in them if we make it home. This week, Baltimore reached a grim milestone, 100 murders before the end of April. Baltimore's mayor is asking for help from the FBI as the city struggles to contain a soaring murder rate. We know we're on borrowed time, so we sit here, blindly riding our own solitary line in an obituary, saying our goodbyes, mourning a place that is dying right before our eyes, straight like the gun's finger that decides our fate pointing at the heart that beats with fear and fight our demons, voices screaming through the dead of night. They recite, there's no hope, no escape, no chance to break free, walking blood-covered sidewalks on streets of apathy. With bald fist, do we exist among the monsters and the pain? Or do we dare to lift our heads and believe again? It's just a deep cycle of poverty, racism, neglect, kids murdered on the streets in Baltimore. But it is here where the light resides, where our voices will be heard, where we determine our lives and in the light have faith that change will come, stepping stones to what we can become. If tomorrow not be promised, what would we do today? Would we rise from the dust or choose to fade away? Should we live our lives in darkness like we're already dead? Or step out of the shadows and into the light instead? If we wanted enough to believe it, if we trust in our power to achieve it, we can break through. Because here, the world belongs to you.